Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing off a connection I made between Grasshopper and Blender to quickly conceptualize some tiling patterns and render them in real time. Let's check it out now. Uh, so we'll, we have a pattern generator here on the Rhino Grasshopper side. We can change parameters for tile width, tile height, uh, tile shape, and some color controls, and then see those updates happen uh, through a quick import process on the Blender side. We're using an add-on called Speckle to handle this import, and it just makes things pretty seamless to move between programs. I just want to give a quick shout out to Quan Li on the Rhino forums for showing this workflow, and this was the inspiration for me to put this all together and to start experimenting with this. If you want to set up this flow between Rhino and Blender, I suggest you visit this URL. I'll link it below in the description as well. So this scene, uh, I purchased from CG Trader and then imported into Rhino and Blender separately. Um, and so everything that you see that's not the kitchen backsplash wasn't created by me. It was created by whoever's linked in the description. Um, so after I imported the background of the scene, I went to work in creating the tiling patterns. So I'm just going to move through the script and show you what each step of the script does. So this whole section, well, let's start with the projection surfaces. So we can define any surfaces to tile uh, using this parameter here. Just set your surfaces and the tiling pattern should pop up on your end. So we take the dimensions of the surface and use it for some X and Y count operations and for my tiling grid algorithm. I do want to mention that the rectangular tiling grid is my algorithm and most of the script, and the other three are taken from the Lunchbox plugin, where you can find a whole bunch of different uh, configurations, which are pretty neat. So this first part is creating the tiling grid for the rectangular orientation, and then organizing those grid points into data trees so that we can create polylines from them, closed lines that we can offset and perform further operations on. So you'll see that on the right side, the tiling grid is highlighted in green. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off that preview. Uh, we take both of those grids and combine them into one tree. And this is to simulate the, the shifted grid effect here. Uh, let's see, oh, I need to turn on the preview for my grid. All right, that's that. This tile shifting parameter will just shift every other row, and you can see that update here on the right. And that's that's what splitting the data trees does into two separate grids. Uh, one is offset and one is not. And then the other three tile outline curves are for the other three Lunchbox plugins. We just take the X and Y count and feed it into this function provided by Lunchbox to get R hexagonal cells, our diamond cells, and our quad cells. This all goes into a gate, which gets selected by the user by this G control. And then everything after this is extruding the tiles so that we get actual surfaces to give to Blender and defining speckle objects, which get uploaded into our host or our speckle cloud. Uh, speckle works as a cloud service, so you upload your model and then in the receiving program, you download the model that you uploaded. Some programs will have a listening function, so as soon as you upload it, your receiving program will sense that there's been an update and download the update. Blender, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, doesn't have this feature. Okay, so I've also included this control here, enable model, so that we can play with the parameters and not have our script freeze. Because if we turn this on, then the speckle objects get created with every iteration, and so do our extruded surfaces, and it's too heavy to then uh, see any rapid results from, from changing of parameters. You can see it's still frozen. Um, so once we have that going, we'll go ahead and send our new model over. While this is sending and we get our done message, I want to go over to Blender and delete our old configuration. I used to have a nice material here for the tile 
Uh, I guess I didn't save the file, but this pink and white is just the test material that I was using in the meanwhile. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and delete our old configuration. Come back here to check that this is done. We have a good status message here. So I'm going back to Blender. I'm refreshing my stream. Uh, this is just syncing back to the cloud. Uh, and then I'm refreshing this. I think you only have to press this one. And then our uh, stream number will change or a commit number. I'm not exactly sure their terminology, but this BFF, this number is going to change every time you update your, um, your model. So once that's all good to go, I'm going to click receive, click OK, and we're going to wait for everything to move over. While we wait, I want to point out that all the materials are applied in Blender by name. So I have a material called Tile 1 and Tile 2. And on the Rhino side, I've defined those materials here as well, Tile 1, Grout, and Tile 2, <clears throat> and organized the geometry to be sent and assigned this material so that when Blender receives it, it knows what material to apply when it gets there. So we have a two-tone setup here. We have a pink and white, and then we have some grout in between. Um, and if you're familiar with Blender, you'll know that from here you can go to your shading tab um, and mess with the mess with the um, the material settings. Okay, I'm going back to our Rhino layout. So as a reminder, we'll turn this off so that we can change parameters and you can change grid types and you can change everything else.